tuned for The Joan Quinn Profiles. As an editor for Andy Warhol's interview, the Los Angeles Herald Examiner, LA Style, and Detour Magazines, Joan covered the social set, the Hollywood hotshots, the international art scene, the mysteries of food, the excitement of travel, and the fabulous world of fashion. Joan continues to find creative people on the cutting edge who make things happen. Here's Joan Agajanian Quinn. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome to the Joan Quinn Profiles. Waiting to be profiled is actor Mark McGraw and Amanda Hendon, who is an entertainment manager. Actor Mark McGraw was born in New York, went to high school in Pennsylvania, where he swam for the Olympic training team, then moved to Eugene, Oregon, where he attended Lane City Community College. He worked in construction, he worked as a paramedic, and was it too quiet for you in Oregon, Mark? Is that why you came to L.A.? I don't know. I think uh, I just really I visited L.A. many times, and then I also acted up in Oregon. And um. yeah, so many, many of the people I worked with up there over you know, 10 years, uh, finally convinced me to give it a shot down here. I hear that in Oregon there's a fabulous theater group of, in, in many of the cities, especially Portland. Yeah, there's, a, there's some great theater up there, and Eugene's very good too. That's Is where it? I lived. And also, in, they have the Shakespeare Festival down in Ashland, Oregon every year. It's oh. a really wonderful t thing to go to. So what were you doing as a paramedic? I actually worked for a city fire department. Oh, is that how it happened? Mm -hmm. And they put me through school to be a paramedic. Oh. So uh, after I became a paramedic, I worked as a firefighter paramedic. And some days I'd be on the fire engine, and other days I'd be on the ambulance. But that was pretty exciting. Oh, yeah. It was very <laughs> exciting. <laughs> yeah. And did that probably helped you with all of your emotions for acting? It definitely brought like a lot of life experience to, yeah. uh, to my table. Did, uh, you, did you take acting lessons there? Uh, I did, oh, yeah, did. in small community college, yeah. Oh, that was cool. Yeah. Then, um, what was this Olympic swim team back in high school? I swam for a team called Foxcatcher in junior high and high school, and that was in Pennsylvania. And then a lot of Olympians came, Olympic wrestlers and swimmers came out of that, uh, that training facility. Oh, they did? Yes. Oh, so that, did you ever think of going on to the Olympics? You know, I, I think in 10th <laughs> grade I discovered like all the other sports, or not discovered, but just wanted to participate in everything else, and uh, my attention span was a little short. On, on swimming, so it was. <laughs> I had done it for so many years, so yeah, I just decided to uh, to uh, do something else. But yeah. there, but here you were in Oregon. You were firefighting. You were a paramedic. Right. Did you ever think of being a doctor? Then going on further to be a doctor? I thought about going to nursing school and uh -huh. also going to uh, to study to be a PA, uh -huh. uh, physician's <laughs> assistant, but. Uh, I really enjoyed the excitement of being on the street and out in like the mountains. Sometimes we had rural rescues and things like that. Oh. Yeah, so I enjoyed that more. So it really took some athletic ability, I think. Oh yes. Didn't it? It oh, yeah. probably did. It probably did. Yeah. And then in between, you were building, constructing. You were working for a construction company, or? I actually worked for a friend of mine, and he re remodeled like older homes. Uh -huh. So he took me on as an assistant, and I just learned from him. He was a great craftsman, so I learned how to do things from him, and then eventually I, I uh, got to where I could build my own house. Were there were they old wood frame houses, or were they stucco houses? Yeah, most of the. Wood houses. Most of the houses I worked on were wood frame. Were wood, yeah. yeah. And they were built in like the 20s, 30s, and we we went in and did remodeling, like uh, sheetrock and all that, and plaster, and then we would uh, do all the finish work inside, the wood trims and window trims. Oh, so trims that took that. expertise. Oh yeah, <laughs> this guy was good. Was he good? <laughs> so here you are. You you leave Oregon and you come to Malibu to be an actor. Yes. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Yes. Well, what about singing? It runs in your family. I play the guitar and I sing in the shower alone. <laughs> you don't sing. Oh, I think you told somebody earlier today that you don't sing and you came waltzing in here singing. It's a lot of fun and I'd love to like explore that sometime and I, I enjoy it but uh, right now I don't feel like I'm to the level where I should be. Do you think it's a competition with your brother? No. No? I no. mean that, that you wouldn't sing because your brother's such a great singer. Yeah, you know, there's a lot to live up to. He's very good. <laughs> <laughs> and your brother is? Is Tim McGraw. And he's married to Faith Hill, another singer. That's correct. So did you guys sing together at holidays? You know, my uncle and I uh, used to sing together. My uncle Hank, 
who he kind of taught me how to play guitar. And we've all sung together around the campfire once in a while. Yeah. Is it is it country, all country, or a lot of folk music, some country, a little bit of southern rock. Yeah. We talked about your athletic ability earlier, and of course your father was a great baseball star, Tug yes. McGraw. Mm hmm And. Um, I guess you got some of that from him, or you were inspired? I was inspired by him, and uh, he was an incredible athlete and uh, just a wonderful driving force around baseball. And I used to go to the ballpark and watch him play and practice. Where was that? That was in Philadelphia. It was oh, when it was I, in Pennsylvania when you were... When I was old enough to yeah. see him play, yeah. Yeah, I was a little young in New York. But so. then you unfortunately lost him. Yes. And mm -hmm. started a foundation, which I think is great. That's correct. Our family decided to start a cancer foundation when my dad was still alive. Oh, did, was he a part of it then? He knew what was happening? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, great. He was a big, you know, he sparked the whole thing and said he wanted to do something with, uh, with, with you know, before he died, he wanted to have something oh. as a legacy to help other uh, people who went through this. Not so. just athletes? Not just athletes, oh, no. I see. no. So you have, what is it, the Tug McGraw? The Tug McGraw Foundation, and we work with Duke University. Oh, really? Yeah, and Jennifer Brewstar is our um, CEO, and Lori Hawkins is our and vice president. And then do you do fundraisers? or? We're, we're a new foundation, and we're just starting to do some fundraisers. Oh, that's good. So uh, we got some things uh, planned, but nothing's actually happened yet. But anything in L.A., or is it going to be in North Carolina? Uh, what we want to do in L.A. is have a, a bowling tournament. Oh, and, that's good. Uh, it should, it, a lot of people like to bowl or like, you know, one of the bowling lanes here in Hollywood, so. That's yeah. great. So you've modeled. Yes. And you've done commercials. That's correct, yeah. What kind of commercials have you done? I did, my first commercial when I got out here, my first national commercial was Campbell's Soup. Yes. Yeah, it's like, mm-mm, good, you know. <laughs> was it? Did you really just say that? No, but I, that's what I was thinking because I remember all the commercials when I was a kid in <laughs> Campbell's Soup. And then I did uh, two different commercials. One was for... Um, Michelob Ultra, the low-carb beer, and then also for uh, Bud Light and Budweiser. So you were in all of those? Yes. So what do you do? You have to go and audition for those? Absolutely, yeah. And yeah. do the same? And, you, and to be an actor, you have to go and audition. I want to talk about okay. what happens now that you're down in L.A. and you ha have a, uh, do you have an agent? I have a commercial agent and I have a modeling agent, yes. So modeling and commercial are covered, but you, you've got a background in that. What about acting? Now, I'm what ha still happened? in search of that you know, elusive theatrical agent, but what? right now I'm studying really hard with my acting coach and, and to be ready for those auditions. Yeah, yeah, so what happens? Then you go to auditions all day long? Uh, not all, <laughs> uh, usually about two to three a day. Do you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you done any yet? Have you gone out at all? Can your acting coach send you out? Yes. Uh, actually, my manager can send me out. He can send you out. Yeah. So what happens then? Do you see the same kind of people? I see a lot of the same kind of people. It's definitely more competitive than it was in Oregon. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. also, um, um, what do you have in common with these other people? Because they say, we want a tall, blonde, blue-eyed, right. athletic person. So you guys all look the same when you come in. How do you catch their eye? I guess I just try and be myself. I have a lot of life experiences, and um, I love you know sitting down and talking with people and being relaxed. And, uh, and then I, I really try and get into what, what the character is and, and draw from my life experiences and personalizations with that character. Uh, you know, I'm sure it'll get more, a lot more involved once I get to the theatrical part of things. But right now, commercially, it's, it's, that's what I try and do. Well, commercially, yes, because you know how to do that. When you get into, when you go against the same actor for the same role all the time, I just would imagine that it's like you guys maybe become friends because you're always there together. You look alike. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen a lot of the same guys at, at the auditions that I go on. And, you know, we see each other again and again. You say hello when yeah, you see Yeah, you say each hello, other. you know, <laughs> who, who's your agent? Yeah, yeah, some of us have the same agent. So it, it's fun. It's, it's yeah, fun. Yeah, I wondered. Do you think that um, having this kind of, I don't know if you call it showbiz, but celebrity background, like with your father a celebrity and with your brother a celebrity, and I don't know, is Uncle Hank a celebrity? Uh, in his own mind, he's, uh, in, our, in our minds he is. Is yeah, he? He's quite the legend of the McGraw family. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> with, with those kind of people, do you think it's a hindrance or a help when you go into these auditions? I definitely think it helps um, in a way. 
uh, just I've been around the industry uh, a little bit, not so much TV and film, but entertainment and sports yeah. and production. Everything's you know produced and and. Uh, everybody's trying to entertain and it's, it's fun. It's a fun environment to be around and I really enjoy it. Where do you think you're going to be in 10 years? Well, I want to be happy <laughs> and I want to continue to uh, explore whatever interests I have. And But really right now it, what I have in mind is uh, hopefully I'll, I'll be in a good, uh, be acting in feature films or TV. Okay, yeah. we're going to look for you. I think we could, we'll remember your face. Okay, thank okay, you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for thank having Thank you, me. Mark McGraw. I brought something for you too. Oh, you I brought did? a our Live Strong bracelet from oh, the foundation. You gonna and put it on there? Sure, if you'd like. Yeah, it's our, and you can size it later. Okay. You can kind of, you can trim it and cut it. But this is our foundation bracelet from the Tug McGraw Foundation. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. That's a surprise. And it's called the 45 YGB bracelet. And my dad's number was 45. Oh. And his slogan for the 73 Mets was, uh, you gotta believe. And that's where the bracelet came from. And we do believe. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. And don't go away. We'll be right back with Amanda Hendon. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome back to the Joan Quinn Profiles. Actor, producer, manager, Amanda Hendon was born and raised in Atlanta. She graduated from the University of Georgia with a degree in psychology and theater arts, then headed to New York City. Were you going to shrink the actors? <laughs> No, but it pays to, to have a little training in that area to be an actor and to hang around with actors, if you know what I mean. Maybe for yourself, too. Huh? Oh, absolutely. What did you do when you went to New York? You know, what, I, what my, my objective into going to New York was because I'd started in Atlanta doing uh, a lot of what you're former guests did, uh, commercials and print and things, I really wanted, I thought, well, if I'm going to continue in this direction, let me go and seek out, find someone who is absolutely the best coach I could find, and that's what I did. Oh, so you were doing those kind of things in Atlanta. <clears throat> that's how I started. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and you did a lot of plays in New York? Correct. Did you, were, were they all off-Broadway? All off-Broadway. Uh, you did, did films? Did some film, some television. Let, you know, I've done a little bit of everything. Did you work, when you were in, in New York, did you work with anyone who then rose to big stardom? Were in any of those things you You know, on? did I work with anybody that did? I worked with some that were already there. Oh, you did? Um, oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I actually studied with quite a few people that have gone on, like Michael Imperioli, who oh, is yeah. now on The Sopranos, you know, was in my class. and. That's a, that's the other thing. Did you take take acting lessons? Yeah, that, that's York? why I went to New York to find oh, the see. best I could study with, and that's what I did. And ironically, through her mentoring, she plucked me out of class and said, "I need to teach you my craft." And then I got into coaching actors, which oh. is something I fell into. And then I was going to ask you about that. What one thing you did do that always surprises me is stand up. Yes. How do you do that? It's almost in a way like a one act play, I guess. It, it, it is sort of. It's the hardest thing I've ever done and the easiest thing I've ever done because if you stare at somebody long enough, they'll laugh is just that, from the so, uncomfortableness of it. But So it, you don't have to always be talking every minute to make them no, laugh? No, you can just be in your own skin and somehow or another the relationship between who's in the audience and you being in your own uncomfortableness or your skin or your circumstance. <laughs> but you had to write all of that, didn't you? Yes. So, uh, and then did you write any theater? Did you write any plays or You know, I've, I've actually written four books. Oh, you have? I haven't done anything with them yet. I haven't gone that brave. Oh. But, um, well, we need an agent for you. Then. Yes, I need a literary agent. <laughs> I yes. need an agent. You can be my agent. <laughs> I'll, I'll manage you. And I'll find somebody for you. Okay, great. Okay, I good. like a good team. Okay, so Teamwork. you moved to LA yes. then from New York. Did you come out here to do something specific or was it just the time to My come acting here? coach in New York says, You need to go out to LA and do stand up because oh, you're, you're doing you pretty well it? here. Ah. But I got out to LA and I didn't feel funny anymore. Ah. Oh, it scared me. I was scared out here. I was too far away from home. I see. Um, and I began to coach. 
Oh, and you were then doing coaching. I was doing coaching, and some of my coaching people began producing, and then I got into casting, and then I got into managing, and it's just evolved from there. But and casting, now I'm producing. casting is what I want to go back to because casting, you spent a lot of time, and you got a Clio Award for yes, some for of the commercial for that a commercial I, that I cast. How do you do that? How do you cast? Well, I think because I had been an actor and because I'd been an acting coach. And because I'd studied psychology, <laughs> there it came in I handy. know how to get inside people. And uh -huh. I don't know, maybe some of it's a gift. Um, so if you, if can, you want to if, call it that. If five people walk up, you know exactly which one should be the yes. person for that part? You, you really know when they walk in the room. Do you? Sometimes you're surprised. But the energy that they bring into the room, really? you get a good grasp of what you're going to see. Not always. There's, you know, an exception to every rule. But... Oh, so, so so that's what put you then into the award category. Yeah, I guess. You I, knew, guess so. I guess so. I guess Because you knew what you were doing. Yeah. Then you developed some projects like G R I T S. What is that? Um, Grits is a sitcom that a dear friend of mine wrote and developed it from my particular stories, which I guess my expression is what my acting coach in New York made me want to do stand-up for and that kind of thing so she developed this and I helped her develop it um, just through my own experience of being raised in the South and how my oh, perception grits and is, grits what grits. does it stand for just grits well, what you eat no girls raised in the South grits. oh that's so grits so that's perfect so is it a, a, it was a group of stories or it's gonna be no a it's group a half of... hour format and we have that's some interest idea. in it and, mm -hmm. That's a great idea because the Southern girls have so many things going on and you just keep following each week. They're such characters. I the know. They're so animated. I know. You know that's so. great. So the other thing, you talked about being an acting coach, but um, you did acting workshops, mm -hmm. basically. And mm -hmm. how do you get actors to come to those things? Well, I had a, um agency that hired me to come in and do some workshops for them and their clients. Oh, and so oh, that kind of pulled and just word of mouth and through my, the people that I coached privately then would oh. say, oh, Amanda's doing a class over this weekend or a workshop over this weekend and it kind of... Where would you do them? Where would you hold those classes? Uh, usually at a theater somewhere oh, just in some, town. Oh, I would I just, so it's like uh, just word of mouth. Mm -hmm. You were uh, a dramaturge. Mm -hmm. what, is, what is that? It You read scripts uh -huh. that come into the theater company and then you set up you choose the ones that you like original script uh -huh. and you choose the ones that you think are best suited or that you want to then bring actors in from the company and do a reading to see if it will tell you anything and if it's worth producing so were you working for a company when you were doing I was, that i was a part, member of a um yeah, acting group. An acting group. Right. But then you also uh, looked for for material for the american Indian registry. I taught an actually it's an acting class. What is I that for the American Indian registry? It is a group specifically that enables American Indians um, to find work in the arts. How great! And to encourage that. And a friend of mine taught for them. And when he had to go away and do a movie, he recommended that I come in. And it was really a great experience. Would you go on to the reservation? No. They, we held the acting class right here at the Hollywood Roosevelt would, in one would, of their rooms. Did you, did you think about going on the reservation well, to, to you know, dig ironically, into it? <laughs> Not that you can tell, but I am a quarter Cherokee. Oh, no, and so I can't. I've, always, <laughs> I've always been fascinated by that culture. But, but that's why you were called, I guess. <laughs> That person knew who to cast, <laughs> and they cast you in that it's role. Like it's so incestual, but it works. That was That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. The um, manager part of it is pretty interesting, too, because you manage actors. You mm -hmm. have a company called Third Hill Entertainment? Mm -hmm. I work for Third Hill Entertainment. Um, that fell into my lap, again, organically through coaching, because when I coached the same people for 10 years, you begin to manage their career anyway. Oh. And an agent friend of mine, who works for a rather large agency here, called me one day and said, someone I know is looking for a partner. Would you be interested in falling into management? I said, let's have the conversation. We did. One thing led to another. It did not work out with this particular person. But my dear friend, Tony Benson, who runs Third Hill, I went for her oh. for advice. And she said, how do you feel about coming in here? And she's been in the business for 19 years. Oh. And so I went in as a manager. I took in five clients. And 
Well, how do you, that, that's what I want to, how do you pick? Do, do you take anybody that comes to you? No. No? Mm -mm. Well, if you're going to manage somebody, why don't you just take anybody? Because you have to find something about them that you can be passionate about. Because if you don't have a passion for the energy that walks in the room, you can't sell that person. I have uh. to know when they <coughs> walk in that I can call up and go, I've got a hot guy that you need to know about. You know what I mean? And it's got to be, you've got to feel like you have a hook into who they are. So are these just actors or do you do them for commercials or modeling or just well, acting? No, for, for all of their career because what ma the difference between oh. manager and agency is a manager really manages a career. Oh. Uh, we don't particularly, aren't hired to procure work, but we do. We chase work all day long oh, for our clients just like they're Act, their agents do as well. So, so, so. you would try to get them a, a TV show or you could get them a modeling gig or you could get them at a charity event, which yes. is something that you're that also producing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, you're working on something for Eve, with Eve Ensler's... Um, Eve Ensler's uh, first work called The Vagina Monologues. Was that her, actually her first work? She had written a little bit. Her first hit. Her first, yeah, Broadway yeah. Um, that I'm aware of. And I could be ignorant, but <clears throat> to my knowledge, that's the first thing that went to Broadway that she's done. No, and I think that is. Yeah, I think that was. She, she did interviews, and I'm so passionate about this. Um, she did interviews with women all over the world and wrote these monologues based on true stories of their life. And they're very entertaining and very funny and very powerful. And all the money we raise goes to end violence towards women and girls. That's great. But th does she come and perform at your uh, charity events? Or, or do you use the people that you manage? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I wish I had enough people to, that I managed that I could put them all in here. But actually, I do manage Liz Sheridan. And she's in it. And she was in it last year and got a fantastic review. And so we're excited about that. I have Lainey Kazan performing in it this year. I have a woman, Eva T uh, Tamargo from Passions. I have April Matson from Quintuplets. I have uh, Jerry Manthe from Survivor. I have some really interesting, wonderful women. Do you direct them? I do. Oh, you do the directing I too? Do. So, I do. So how, what's the format of a show like that? Well, I don't want to give away any of the surprises. Ooh. But no, but the, the, the beauty of this show. But you do it every show, year, right? Yeah, you're the beauty of this show, when you're doing it as a benefit, which happens, there's a worldwide campaign that takes place every year between February 1st and March. Right. 6th. And they do it. It's, New York is very big for V Day, yes, right? Yes, yes. It's done all over the world. It was 2,300 venues last year, and we came in third place. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> but any, thank you. But, um, we, when it's done worldwide like that, you have a little more creativity in your choices. You don't have to do the commercial production per se with three women sitting at microphones. Oh, I see. So, so you do in a way the vagina monologues, kind of, but you do it in, we, a, in we your do own it, way? We just have more liberty and more creativity, and we're at the Pacific oh. Design Center, which is a fabulous venue. I'm I sure you've see. been to the yeah. silver screen. And, and there's, I like to work in metaphors, so we have a lot of things going on with the cast. It's, it's just going to be beautiful. But you staged. don't rewrite it. No. You can't, you, you don't rewrite no. it. You use her you have words. You use her words. And you have to use all women. Does she come? Because if she's got these all over the U.S. or all over the world, did she you say? She can't be in every... I so, know. And she was out here last year, the week before mine was, and she's here this year, the week at, no, she was here last year, the week after this year, she's here the week before at Book Soup because she's doing an autograph signing of a new book she's got called The Vagina Warriors. So if she could stay until Friday, we hope to have her at our. But when she comes out to do something like that, would she come to a rehearsal? Do you she, rehearse? She would at the time. <laughs> do you permit. rehearse? We are going to have a rehearsal. Yes, we have. We haven't yet, but we are. But, but do you read with these people individually? Sometimes I do because sometimes their schedule won't permit and sometimes people need a little more of my direction, not because they need direction, but because there's a certain way I want it. I want to yeah. see it, the colors. Did you ever do the vagina monologues on stage? Well, I did last year. I did a reading myself last year. You did year. do the mm -hmm. reading. Mm -hmm. And my co-producers did as well. So um, you know who to pick. <laughs> it's really, you know, <laughs> that's it's, your casting I again. I love it. I love it so much, and I love it that it's about 
raising awareness and ending violence against women and girls because I'm raising a daughter and that's how it began. It began as a conversation on the schoolyard and then it evolved into this big beautiful sold out standing ovation production and I'm really proud to be a part of it, really proud. When Eve Ensler um, wrote this, did she think that it was going to be such a huge success? I don't think she did. I think she started out uh, being passionate about it and as she did these interviews was so taken personally. Oh, when she met the women yes. and what they had to say about it. And so moved and when she began to do it just as a one woman show it just magnified into everybody else's emotions because we're all the same women no matter our circumstances are different, our ages are different but culturally we're different maybe even you know uh, we have different religions, but we're all the same. She um, came to the UN when I was there one year during the Commission on the Status of Women. Uh huh. And she sat on a panel and she talked about all of the problems because, you know, the UN encompasses the whole world. Right, and she right. had oh. experiences that came from oh. that worldwide that situation. That must have been fantastic. It was. She's great. She is a little dynamo. Yeah. You know, I met her last year and I was not because our show was awarded by the Worldwide Campaign as coming in third place for production value and raising awareness and towards ending violence. They invited me to New York to their big that's, hoopla that's every September at the Apollo. That's what I was going to ask you if you went back for I, this. It was the day before school started. I have a nine-year-old so you know obviously that is my priority. But you didn't get to go. So I didn't get to go but Tanya Pinkins was in our oh, yes. show last year uh -huh. and she lives in New York. So I said Tanya you want to go because she's done it at Madison Square Garden as well as our show last year and uh, so she was able to use the tickets and go and she said it was fabulous. Uh, well I'm so glad you came and told us about it. Well, what are we going to see you doing next? Thank you. I don't know but this performance is February 26th so but, you can come. Okay. And then I'll come back and tell you what I'm doing next. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much for being with us today Amanda Hendon. Thank, thank you. And thank you for being with us. Keep riding to 777 South Figueroa 44th floor Los Angeles 90017 and we'll see you next time on the Joan Quinn Profiles. <laughs> <laughs>